Uh, the inspiration for the new series uh, really uh, did come from the uh, comics that Kevin Eastman and I did years ago. And the first episode of the new series we call Things Change, because things have changed. With the first animated series, the, the emphasis was on humor, and, and it was sort of like humor with a little bit of action. Um, which is the exact opposite of how we used to do the comics, which was action with humor. That was what I was hoping to get with the new show and, and what we are getting. And I think it's a really wonderful blend because you get, you know, stories that move along quickly, but you also get a, a leavening of humor, which is, I think, a perfect mixture. Your reign of terror is over, Stockman. You've been practicing that? You like it? I liked the old show uh, and it was fun. They were, the turtles were always a little too puffy for me. They look, look kind of inflatable, too cutesy. The new show really does reflect the way we used to draw them in the comics and still draw them in, in the new comics. They're agile, they're muscular, they're, they have a harder edge. You know, they, they look like they can kick butt as ninjas. And one of the things I'm really happy about in the new show is that we, we have done the classic comic book stylization of the eyes behind the bandanas. They're just white um, slits, which is the way we always drew them in the comics when they had their bandanas on. And I think it gives them a real kind of edgy, grim look when necessary. The turtles uh, don't walk around in the daytime, which they, they did quite a bit in the old series. Uh, it drove me crazy. The world that the turtles inhabit in the new show is a sort of serious, slash cartoon version of New York City. It is very much like what we tried to do in the comics, you know, where it wasn't so much a, a realistic version of New York City, it was our kind of comic book stylized version of it. It's the turtle's home, but it's, it also has a threatening edge, you know, it's, it's mysterious, it's moody, it's dark. Master Splinter is always after them, especially in, as we see in the first few episodes. Uh, don't go out in the, in the daytime, you know, don't, don't show yourself, because he's very concerned, and rightly so, that, you know, they're very odd looking and they could easily get into big trouble, you know, and captured to be dissected or whatever. It's my understanding that New York City is crawling with a lot of things, and it does seem to be crawling, but then just, it's just the way it is. Episodes two and three are the two parts of Attack of the Mausers, which introduces not only April O'Neil, but the evil Dr. Baxter Stock. We introduced April in the original comic books in the second issue as um, the way that the turtles become more familiar with the human world, and she becomes kind of their interface to the human world. She learns a lot from the turtles, but they learn a lot from her. The character of Baxter Stockman, brilliant but somewhat deranged uh, scientist who creates these incredible robots called the Mausers, does come back to bedevil the turtles later after after these, the, the whole Mauser story plays out. Um, and uh, he comes back in several very strange forms. That's all I can say right now. I'll be back at work, go Monday morning. The character Splinter was in large part influenced by the, the wonderful character of Yoda in the Star Wars movies. Typically in a, in a martial arts story, there is the teacher you know, who instructs the students in the ways of, of whatever style or art he's teaching. Clearly they need guidance. I mean, they're, they're four turtles, you know, trying to survive in New York City. They needed a wise master. He is also, if not literally, um, figuratively their father. You know, he has raised them. He has, he has taught them right and wrong um, as well as he can. It is kind of curious that uh, Splinter is a rat, and yet he is a, a master of the martial arts. Uh, and it does raise some interesting questions about how he got to that point. He obviously did, and that will be revealed in, in future episodes. The, the whole martial arts aspect to the Turtles uh, really comes from a, an interest and a fascination that both Kevin and I had in, in that whole thing. And just that, the fact that human beings can do those things with their bodies, you know, that kind of athleticism just amazed me. So that's really where the martial arts thing came from. And I think we're also fascinated with the whole ninja thing because, it, you know, it's kind of creeping around in the dark and, you know, being mysterious and hidden and sort of like a secret agent martial artist kind of thing. One day we were feeling kind of punchy and Kevin, to make me laugh, drew a turtle standing upright with a nunchaku strapped to its forearm and a mask on its head. And I just thought that was a riot. So uh, I had to draw my own version of it. I tweaked a few things. And then he drew four of them and he was calling them Ninja Turtles. And I said, well, why not Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? And, and, the, and that's, how they, that's how the whole thing was born. You know, and, and the name kind of plays off uh, uh, comics fads that were 
prevalent at the time. There were lots of ninjas in comics, lots of teenagers, lots of mutants, and of course lots of superheroes. So that's really how it began. There are a bunch of neat stories in those comics and I re I've always wanted to see them told in, in animation and, and that's what's happening. Remarkably, it's, it's what I've gotten. We've managed to get so much of that, that stuff plus add new stuff that it's been fantastic.